a lot of people are struggling because it's the holidays and they have loved ones and I'm blessed enough to have found Jamie and get to talk to all you guys and get to talk to Griff and yes and my mom and stuff so I gotta ask about a couple people Meredith Johnson um, my brother's High school, uh, college, I'm sorry, girlfriend's mother, Mary Hazel Johnson. How is she? No, she's just asking how is she. You don't have to go get her. Or do you want these people in the room? If they want Griffin to come, thinks they can. Mary Hazel Johnson. I'm just going to name the names, and if they hear me and they want to come and say something to their loved ones, I'll show them the tape. Mary Hazel Johnson, Meredith Johnson's mama, who passed away of cancer. Years and years ago I met her, she was a beautiful lady. Has Victoria Harmon's mom, Peggy Harmon, crossed over yet? If she has, can she come in the room? Uh, yes. <laughs> okay. Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, I kept looking at this woman, I'm like, are you the Mary Marvel, the first one? Mary and it's Hazel. a no. And so, that's when Griff was like, oh, I need to get up and go. And I was like, no, I don't think so. But the first one you just asked about, she's doing wonderful. She's crossed over. She's fine. Holidays, she's going to be there observing. She's going to leave a few signs. She really likes doing things with birds. Okay. Um, and she so loves your brother. It is the sweetest thing ever that he still thinks of her so much. Okay. And that she's really proud of her daughter. Her daughter's doing really well. Okay. And yeah. is in another relationship and is doing great. And she's, she's very really, happy. She has a little baby. Love it. Yeah, she has a little baby, um, Mary Hazel. They named her something after you, and um, she is OBGYN. She's a doctor, her daughter. Yeah. And she became a doctor because of her mom dying of cancer. Yeah. Yeah. And I love she's her going to help so many people. But the Peggy person is in the room. She is? Yeah. And she's she, funny. Did, she did you get to know her? <laughs> no, but I heard she was funny. Shame. Yes. Vic's mom. I think you two would get along really well. Okay. Vic's <laughs> mom. So she did cross over finally. Betty Mayer. Betty, Betty, Betty. Okay. Is she doing okay? Uh, she said she's doing fine. It's weird, she's not in the room, but I feel like she's got a speaker uh -huh. right here. <laughs> oh, she said she's doing fine. Okay. She left behind three daughters, and one of them struggles a little bit, and I've asked about her before, and I was supposed to show her daughter the tape of her saying hi before. I don't mean to keep bothering her. But does she have a message for her daughters? or? Um, she died of cancer. Yeah, and she doesn't even talk about herself. She's really talking about how different her daughters are and that they're struggling in different ways. Yes. But the one that you're talking about, yes. she wants to see her under uh, therapy. Nicole, okay. Whether it is, you know, the mindfulness therapy, the counseling therapy, the life coaching therapy, okay. of giving her a space to really complain and really to decompress. Okay. To, 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 to a place to fall apart. She needs a place to fall apart. Okay. She's not supposed to try to keep it all together. Okay. And um, she's she loves all three of her children. I know she tremendously. does. Like, I know she does. Can't get enough of trying to help them. But she says it, it's coming to a time of the end of this year and next year that we need to be together and stay together. And the daughters aren't necessarily doing that for one another. They're kind of being more individual and um, doing things on their own. She says, please ask them to lean on each other and okay. use each other as family. She said, that would be my greatest wish for this holiday. Thank you so much. Okay, I love you, Betty. I'm glad, glad you're doing well. Um, Ricky Gray, my sixth grade crush. I know his wife and boy are struggling, and maybe daughter too, I'm sure, and sister. How you doing, Ricky? A message for your family for Christmas? 
How you doing, baby? Doing good, baby. He said, how you doing, Mickey? How you doing, baby? <laughs> he's being funny. He's sitting on the edge of my couch, like on the um, the armrest. He's uh -huh. not sitting on the couch properly. Uh huh. <sighs> um. Messages. What's what? happening? Are we singing? <laughs> uh, he's going to be bringing in the holiday cheer with songs this year. Okay. Telling his wife and his son to start paying attention to radio. Okay. You know, songs that come up. Okay. And even um, uh, looped words that happen in your head when you start singing that one piece of the song again and again and again and again. Okay. Thank you, Ricky. Okay. And so that's going to have uh, meaning for the okay. words that are being said that'll help kind of ease their heart. He said this, the wife is having the hardest time. Okay. What can um, I do for her, baby? She stopped talking about her pain because she thought other people were tired of hearing it. Oh my God, I've gone through that. She can talk to me. He says, can you help her understand what that's like? Yes. I've had people say, you're doing better. You didn't say Griffin's name for 15 minutes. <laughs> You're like, well, guess what, Griffin? <laughs> yeah. Then I, you know what happened? Then my friendship just had to end with that person. Yeah. Yes, because it's not about the measure of how you yeah, are being quiet Griffin about them. Griffin is still alive to me. He's alive. We just have a different relationship now. He's never dead to me. Ever, 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 ever. And Ricky's never dead to his family. Never. He said, thank you. Right? He says, boy, I really wish other families could feel that power, too, and that strength. Yeah, they have you know, to. Yeah. I think your boy went fishing, finally, without you. I saw on his Instagram. I mean, all I do is get to just peek at their little pages on social media. I don't know. But I know he was so struggling. He expressed that you were his bestie. This is about the biggest compliment any father could receive. That's right. That's right. But I will tell your wife that she needs to surround herself with people that it's okay to talk about you. Because he's not even been passed away that long. I don't even know if it's over a year yet. This may be their first holiday without him. I'm not sure. It's really, it's not that old at all. Yeah. And he died very suddenly, I think. Like, he got cancer and then was just gone, I think. He said yes, within two months. Yeah. They were so excited when I said you came to the reading. Oh, my God. But it's another example of um, fear of communicating. Like, Joy, his sister, had said he, she wanted to ask the family, his wife and stuff. But he, she didn't say wife, but... That's what I was guessing, if they believed in talking to a medium, you know? So they were all thinking the same thing, but not saying it. Not saying it. Because they were all so happy when I posted it. And Ricky knew to come here because he knew I was just crazy enough to post it. <laughs> on social media, and they were all so he, thrilled. Is it, that is true. That is true. He's looking around the room. That, that's true. He goes, but it's the way that you post things, too. Oh. You know, you're not making it. Like it's far out there. You're making it as, you know, this is part of healing. This is part of learning. And he says, and that's the approach that I would want my family to take because it's not about letting go of what their religious belief systems are or even adopting a new one. And I think many people believe they have to do that for it to work. And it's just right. not that way. Ricky knows that because he grew up where I grew up and it's so Bible Belt, you know, in Georgia's. You know all about that, Jamie. And so... Yeah, when you say you're talking to dead people, sometimes you get the, the stink eye. <laughs> yeah. You get people who leave the room. Yes, yeah. yes. But um, Ricky, um, they were so excited when you came. I mean, you could just see it. And your wife had said something like, um, and your son reached out to me and started talking to me too. He wanted to know all about how you came, what you said, every detail he hung on to. And, um, you know, just by texting back and forth on the Instagram or uh, Facebook, I can't remember. But um, 
He said, she said, you believed. Your wife knew you believed in the afterlife. And they know the grandchild sees you and talks to you. I think I told you that before, but so keep that up because they're aware that he sees you. Oh, he says, I absolutely will. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I'll for sure give them your message because they'll be so excited. Oh, yay. And you're doing okay? Yeah, he looks great. He's doing well. I love it. He's back to... Yeah, he's more comfortable around you now. He was a little shy at first. I remember. Yeah, and his wife even you. confirmed that, that he would have felt out the situation. Because you said, I don't know if he's shy. Sorry, there's a bug. Or he's feeling out the situation. And she said, that's so him. He's feeling out the situation. Not anymore. I mean, he, as soon as you mentioned his name, he was right here. Look, right here. He's sitting wonky on the couch. He's so comfortable. <laughs> so comfortable, right? Like old hat now, huh? That's so cool. That's so cool. He's really excited this door is open. He doesn't okay. feel so far away from his family because of you. Aww. He says, I, I thank you. Don't make this me cry. This is you. It's you. Thank you. Thank you, and I will get these messages out. And because um, Meredith, um, Mary Hazel's daughter, Meredith, I just love her. Um, she asked me, have you asked, about, she's real Southern, have you asked about my mama? She, and I keep for, I kept forgetting, so I can't wait to tell her that she's doing okay. She was another uh -huh. one, cancer, dead within a year, like, whoa. I think ovarian cancer or something. That's why her daughter became an OBGYN. OB, yes. Yeah, yeah. It was an assumption when you mentioned what kind of doctor, when she said, my daughter's going to save a lot of lives. Yeah, and she did it because of you, Mary Hazel. And the grandbaby girl's named after you. I can't think of her name right now, but it's like a put-together name of yours, but... I'm sure you know. I can't think of it. And Jamie's bad with names, so forget Jamie. So. <laughs> I'll take. Um, I had a funny situation like that today. People get upset, huh? I'm yeah, they, she, in life. I'm terrible in life, and this woman really. Face. You know if you. No, oh, yeah. I remember a face. Yeah, me but too. she was all over this, and I was trying to explain to her not my strong suit, <laughs> and. The person kept showing me um, the Cheshire cat from Mary Al Alice in Wonderland, the smiling cat. And then um, after a few times, and I didn't know what to do with that picture, right. he kept showing me a chest of drawers uh -huh. again and again. And finally, I was like, listen, I'm sorry, but I'm seeing these images. I don't know what they mean. And the woman goes, oh, my God, that's my husband. His name is Chester. Oh my God, how cute. I don't even think about the name Chester. Yeah. Chest of drawers, Chester drawers, That's so Cheshire cute, cat. Like, I love the hints he was giving you. <laughs> he, poor, poor, like, poor spirit, man. Working with a medium who's like dense, blonde. No, but Jamie, it's so funny because here you are talking to dead people, giving information that is unbelievable, and people get upset with you because you can't get a name. <laughs> <laughs> You're not allowed to have a, a one week thing, you know. So funny. Humans. So demanding, right? <laughs> it was pretty cool. <laughs> so demanding. So demanding. Okay, I can't think of anyone else to ask about, but I love everybody. So well, Griffin's much. first in line to say, I love you back. I love you. Merry Christmas. 